What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Morrison. In this video today, I will be sharing with you how you can automate the backups of your SQL Server databases running on an AWS EC2 instance to a S3 bucket. Now, in many large organizations out there, they will have like a backup solution like Veritas or IBM Spectrum. Now, if you're in a small organization and they don't have any backup solution like this, then implementing a solution like this would be ideal. And this would be good for taking one-off backups as well. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So let's head over to our AWS console. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to create a S3 bucket location for our backups. So what I'll be doing on this channel is give you like a 360 DBA experience. Like if you're a junior right now, you can go into any company and pretty much start operating like you're a pro and like you have three years worth of experience. So the next thing you're going to do is create a bucket and I'm going to give it a name. SQL data. I'm going to keep the same region because all my servers are in this region. Block all public access. Create bucket. So the S3 bucket is just like a regular storage location where you can create folders and upload files. So I'm going to be creating a folder here, say server one. Create folder. And this is our folder we can go into it. And if you want, you can upload files directly from your server. So let's go back to buckets. Copy the S3 URI. And you can save it in a notepad. So the next thing we're going to do is create an IAM role that gives our EC2 access to our S3 buckets. So search IAM role. Select roles. Select create role. For the use case, we're going to select EC2. As it states here, it allows EC2 instance to call AWS services on your behalf. Now select next. So we're going to search for S3 full access because we want the EC2 instance to have full access on our EC2 buckets. Select and select next. So I'm going to give this role a name MR EC2 to EC to S3 dash role. You can add tags if you want, but for this tutorial, I don't need to create role. Now, as you can see, I have my S3 role here. Now it's time to go back to our EC2 instance and, and add this IAM role to the server. So search EC2. Now once there, there is select instances, select the server you want to add the role to. Choose action, security, modify IAM role. So as you can see, I already had a role here. So I'm gonna change it to the one that I created, save. Next thing you want to do is just head over to Google and download the AWS CLI. And then download for Windows. Now I already download this file and I already have it installed on my server. As you can see, this is the file. Now let's remove to our server. Connect. Yes, 
So to validate that the AWS CLI was installed successfully, what you can do is just launch the PowerShell console. And type AWS HELP. So now we're going to head over to our backup directory for the SQL Server. And we're just going to create a test file to copy to our S3, and then we are going to automate our backups. So let's call this backup file. Now we're going to cd to this directory, so we're going to save it in our text file as well. And if you do it there, you should see the file that is there. So in order to copy to our S3 location, we're going to be using this command here, AWS S3 sync, ensure you have the dot, and then this is the location that we're going to sync the file to. copy so now we can actually do a list on the s3 bucket location to see if the file is actually there aws s3 and the name of the bucket location So this is the file that is in our S3 location. Now let's go on the console and validate that as well. So let's type S3. And this is our backup file. So the next step is that we're going to connect to our SQL Server instance using Management Studio and then automate our backups. So I'm just going to grab my DNS name again. Run SQL Server Management Studio. remember me connect now in the working world on your production servers your backups are going to be automated or should be automated if you are in a position and you, your backups are not automated that is something that you need to fix right so you don't want to when you have to do a backup you go and run your backups manually so I'll be showing you the steps to complete automated backups. You have three types of backup. You have a full backup, you have differential backup, and you have transaction log backup. So I'll be just doing a full backup for now. I'll be explaining the different type of backups in another video. So expand the management section. Right click on maintenance plan, new maintenance wizard. So these are real life scenarios that you would come upon when you're working so there are two ways to enable this we can use the scripts or we can just go to the server and manually enable our sql server agent so it seems like it's disabled so let's head over to our server launch the configuration manager and select start now our SQL Server agent is running. Now let's refresh. Now let's try recreating our job again. Maintenance wizard. So we can give it a name, so I'm just gonna call it daily full backup. So here I can create a separate schedule for each task or use a single schedule for the entire plan. So I'm going to, so we're going to change it. Select daily for the frequency, select daily want to occur every one day, 
12 a.m. is fine. In production, real life, again, you're going to have no end date. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to put end date as to date. Okay. Next. Now, what we want to do is do a full backup. So these are the two other backups that I was making reference to. Select next. Full backup. And then we're going to be selecting the databases we want backed up. So I'm going to select the three of them. So this is another option. I could select all databases. Select OK. So we're going to select disk. So this is the location for our backups. So if you want, you can select create subdirectories for each database. I don't want that. So I'm going to just leave it as is. This is our extension. And for options, you can specify when the backup set will expire. And here we're going to ensure that our database backup is compressed. Now, ideally, we want to ensure our backups are encrypted, but I'm going to do that in another video. Select next. And it's going to write into write the report to a file location. Select next. Close. If we expand our SQL Server agent, we should see our daily full backup. But this backup is not going to run until 12 a.m. tonight. But we want to actually take a backup now, so we're going to start job at step and it's important to note that the duration of your backup is dependent on the size of the databases so the job has completed successfully so close and let's go to our ec2 instance and then check our backup directory so this is our backup files that were completed so the next step we're going to create a batch File. So we're going to use these two commands here. Select Notepad, paste. So essentially, what this is going to do is going to need this command. So what this batch script is going to do is going to change the directory to the folder where we have our backups and then sync the files to our S3 location and then we are going to do a remove asterisk in the directory. This will remove all the files in the current backup folder once it has copied them over. So for now I'm just going to keep it in the documents directory and call it backup that BAK save now the next step is to create a Windows task that is going to execute the script on a daily basis so let's say Windows task so let's say task scheduler so we're gonna create a basic task we're gonna call it SQL SQL backups next we're gonna leave it at daily select next so let's say our backup normally takes one hour to complete for safety we're gonna say execute at 2 a.m. in the morning next so we're gonna select start a program next we're going to browse for our script that we just created. Documents, select the backup script. Next. Finish. So let's execute our script on demand. We need to save it as a that bat. So let's go to done documents.
Now as you can see it's showing the gear icon for our scripts. So let's go back to our scheduler, edit. And these are things that you'll really come across while you are working. Now let's edit. Let's change the K to T. OK. OK. Now let's run manually. So our file should be successfully copied over to our S3 location. So let's validate that. We can use the AWS command line and do ls. So as you can see, these these are our backups that are on the S3 location now. So let's validate that from the console as well. Search S3. Select MR SQL data, view our server, and here are our files that were successfully copied over to our S3 location. Go back to our backup directory and list the directory. So we need to make a slight modification to our script RM is for Linux, and we need to use BEL slash Q. The queue will delete it in silent mode. If you don't have the queue, it's going to it is going to prompt you for yes or no, and then that will alter your automation because nobody will be there to say yes or no when the copying of the file is running. So let's run our Windows task again. Select run. All files should be removed from the directory. So let's validate that no extra files were copied to our S3 location. There is no duplicate. Our three files remain. So that's it for now guys. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.